Hey everybody, welcome to day four. It's, uh, you're halfway through, we're proud of you, we're excited, we've really, uh, been really happy with the response. You've been putting lots of really good comments down here as on under each of the videos for each of the days. It's been great. Yesterday was the rest challenge, so as you didn't eat, did you become more acidic or did you become more alkaline? Did you get into the road rage? Did you get the sleepy and procrastinating? All those sort of things. And remember, this is not about making life worse. This is about understanding what certain things do to your body and being self-aware. So today, we're going to be looking at the white food challenge, which may be the hardest day of them all because a lot of the white foods are addictive. Sugar, heroin, Sugar is more addictive than heroin, basically. So you really need to be aware that you have to be really determined. That's why we have the support below in the comments. So make sure you use that to get through this day. It's very, very hard. You could find yourself going through withdrawal and everything else, which tells you something, right? And again, this isn't about making life miserable. This is about being aware of the different things. And there was an article recently that I read that I thought was absolutely fascinating. And it had to do with the bacteria and stuff, the flora and the fauna of our digestive system. So you can look at, as Martin likes to say, and we're going to bring him on in a second, you know, what goes in here is actually the outside of your inside. And all along there are like the Amazon forest. And unfortunately, when you look at what's in our digestive system in terms of fauna and flora, and you look at what's in the digestive system of, say, a tribe in, in the Amazon that has never had an experience of meeting uh, Western civilization or New Guinea, they're very, very different. So with our antibiotics and our processed foods, we do a lot of damage to the interior of our body. And that also causes some of the problems that we're talking about in this seven-day challenge. So with that, I want to bring Martin on. And let's talk a little bit more about what to expect with the white food challenge. Because I know you've got a whole uh, expan you know, huge amount of expansion you want to do in this area. Well, thanks. The main point is uh, we can name what we say these are. We frequently call them the, the white death foods. It's the product of the industrial age. Our industrialized agriculture produces stuff that our industrialized food processing turns into what they like to call food. And then through that, they turn us into the people that the uh, pharmaceutical chemical industry needs to look after because we are breaking down. So the points, anything refined, that's refined sugar, refined flour, refined salt, refined oil, as in food oil, plant oil. Those are, why are they refined? Why aren't they whole? When we grew up, when we were growing up, no, I should say, when we were developing hundreds of thousands of years ago as a species, there was no such thing as refined food, refined anything. We always ingested things whole in the complexity of what nature created. And that's how it's supposed to be. Uh, industrialized food or industrial food production has focused on shelf stability, consistency, uh, and uh, I don't know, they call it value. Well, it's a financial value, but it's not nutritional value. You're dying to say something, huh? No. No, no. no. okay, I'll carry I was on. Thinking my background as a grocery, uh, working in the grocery industry for 20 years, I was thinking, yeah, like the last thing we wanted was for anything to go bad. We wanted to be able to put it on the shelf and have it stay there for months and months and months until finally somebody bought it and consumed it. And we never really thought at all about whether there was any nutritional value at all. I mean, you could eat it, you were alive. And you can eat it, yes. You can eat it, it just doesn't turn into much of anything good. So uh, white salt, the opposite of white salt is whole salt. 
such as Celtic, Himalayan, Real, Martins, salt that has not been refined. Uh, so sea salt, know, that be one? Well, you look, in, you look at the package of the sea salt, it's either going to say whole sea salt or refined sea salt. Mm. Well, refined is going to be just a pure sodium chloride, no trace minerals, not so great. Again, sugar, when you have refined sugar, it's the completely pure snow white crystalline substance that looks so wonderful. Well, it's not that great. And it's even hard to trust molasses, which is the whole brown sugar, still in its wet state. These days, it's made by first refining it and then throwing the uh, brown stuff back in. That's not the greatest. You're, I'm hoping that you'll find something raw for your sweetening needs, like perhaps ma maple syrup or honey or something of the sort agave syrup, but we're not really meant or supposed to have a lot of very sweet things. So bad news there, I'm sorry. Uh, flour, uh, whole is better than refined, but unfortunately, of course, the whole needs to be kept either refrigerated or even frozen, else it will go bad. It go, goes rancid on you. So you have to keep it in the freezer, otherwise uh, it's no good. Or else you have to grind your own, which becomes a real challenge. I mean, you would have to have the whole kernels, whole grain, and you would have to have a flour mill in the house, on the premise, and freshly grind something and bake with it that day. Of course, we have now developed a huge challenge with gluten. Uh, if you have uh, seen Dr. Davis's book called Wheat Belly, uh, it, it's such an indictment of the agricultural industry where he shows that the invention or hybridization of dwarf wheat back in the 70s started a trend that is leading to more and more people becoming gluten intolerant and all kinds of problems. Anyway, so that's one of the foods that we would like you to not eat in this challenge. Refined oil, what did they refine out of it? Why did they need to refine it? Well, the main reason with plant oils is the omega-3 fats are the fragile fats, the ones that can go rancid even at room temperature, even at minus, well, I don't know, even it is it is colder, like when water would still freeze, these oils are still fragile at that temperature. So these fats, these fragile fats have been refined out of it. So the, the vegetable oil that sits on your grocery store shelf, and it will say refined, if it doesn't spoil, that means it doesn't have the good omega-3s in it. It will be rich in omega-6s. And that creates the imbalance that we are now all trying to um, correct with supplementation. Uh, what else did I not remember, Scott? Oh, well, we're talking about generally processed foods. Sure enough. Yeah. Yes. So. Okay, once you cook things or can things or pasteurize things, what you have done is you coagulated the proteins. So your body now has to find the extra external energy to build the enzymes to be able to digest these foods. So you either have to supplement digestive enzymes or you have to eat predominantly raw, uncooked, unpasteurized food. Else you're building up a deficit which then challenges your digestive system, leaves decaying, putrefying, rotting things in it. I don't need to get too graphic, do I? No. <laughs> so okay. what we're looking at now is no flour, so no bread, no donuts, no muffins, no uh, buns, no pizzas, no sugar. Good luck with that. That's going to be a really, really hard one. But, you know, we're just talking about sugar on donuts and sugar in all sorts of stuff that it's in, uh, no, no rice, 
no, no milk, no fried oils, no salt, unless it's whole salt. Um, so here's what's left. Mevy, M-E-V-Y. Meat, eggs, vegetables, yogurt. Essentially, it's the paleo food, really, or the paleo diet. Um, anything salad, as long as it's uncooked, or it can be slightly cooked, like steam, steamed lightly or stir-fried lightly. And you can have it with some cooked protein. That's fine. You can have oil and vinegar dressing, but you have to stay away from the refined foods. So what's going to happen when we start staying away from these refined foods, Martin? Well, sometimes it happens quickly. Sometimes you will have a reaction right after the or at the end of the first day. The more likely scenario is that you need to go like this for 10 days, two weeks before it really kicks in. But what does happen is called a cleansing reaction. Some people call it a detox reaction or a Herxheimer reaction. What happens is your body detoxes sufficiently to the point where it says, I can start dumping the toxins that I have squirreled away. It's sort of like taking the garbage can from under your sink and spilling it right in the middle of the kitchen because that's what we can do. There's enough room on the floor of the kitchen because it's been clean for several days. So what it's going to feel like is either a headache or a, even a sense of unreality where you're, it's, it's, I remember when I was going through it, it felt as though I were walking under a glass dome. My sensory perception changed, maybe calling it sense of unreality. Anyway, headaches, uh, breakouts, skin breakouts of some sort, uh, diarrhea, elimination symptoms of some sort from getting um, too many toxins released from the hiding places where the body squirreled it away. Um, yeah, I think that's about as good as I can put it. You could feel like you're getting the flu, but instead of 10 days, it would only last one day or two days at most. <laughs> you're not you're not doing a very good job of, of uh, am I selling it real hard doing it I'm thinking <laughs> oh Lord you know how do I sell this okay on the other side of this well after you've gone through this hellhole of cleansing you are actually this is sort of like taking an air, airplane and flying it through the clouds once you punch through the clouds on the top side it's forever sunshine like you're digging out from living under the cloud cover, under the cover of the coating of all the toxins that you have accumulated and packed around. And once you break through to the other side, it's sunshine 24-7. So as I was listening to you, I had an image of an igloo. Can you tell that I live in Canada? Uh, but instead of it being ice around it, it was just all this grunge and garbage, and it's kind of being held away from me. And so, so I don't really know or smell it or anything else, but the thing is, is I can't stand up because most igloos are small, right? And so what you're saying is, is that we're going to be taking this stuff and moving it away, and some of it's going to be spilling on me, and I'm going to have all this kind of garbage, but eventually it's going to be cleared away. And then it's like, wow, I'm able to stand up straight. I'm able to be in the sun and uh, all of a sudden my body is able to start heal itself which is a big part of what we want to be doing we want to be able to see if if you stop eating all of this food which we believe is not at all healthy for you or helpful in the beginning the what that result will be is you don't feel very good because you've got to get it all out you've got to cleanse and your body's kind of been holding it all back saying oh you know you, you may not feel very good but I don't know what to do with all this other stuff, so I'm just going to stick it around. And then once we start letting it kind of go and it comes out, it's like, wow. So th this is only the beginning. This is a seven-day challenge, and we're challenging you with seven different things for one day, which really isn't enough. But we just want to introduce you to this concept of I stick something in my mouth or I don't, 
and my body has a reaction. And sometimes the reaction is really quick, sometimes the reaction is really slow. And I've noticed as I become more and more aware that I will eat something, clear nostrils, two seconds later, dripping like crazy, right? Or all of a sudden, yeah, mucus I'm... reaction. Right. So, huh, that's what happens when I eat that. So yes. I can eat it knowing I'm going to have a drippy nose for an hour or two hours or three days. Or I can say, well, that's really something that my body perhaps doesn't like because it's not reacting in a way that I like. So I'm going to stop. And that's what this is all about. We want you to stop the flour, stop the sugar, stop the rice, stop the salt, stop the milk, stop the fried oils, stop the hydrogenated oils, stop the processed food for a day and see what happens. And I would really recommend that if you're going to have an apple, you have an organic apple. If you're going to have an orange, have an organic orange. If you're going to have a strawberry, have a strawberry an organic. I was going to say strawberry orange, an organic orange. <laughs> you're going to, have, you know, if you're going to have like yogurt, have organic yogurt. Like get the pesticides right out of the equation too, because that's another thing that kind of happens, right? So we want to see what happens when you're not poisoning yourself, and that may be a bit strong, but check it out and then see like wow like I'm having this reaction and we're warning you you're gonna have if you have a reaction it's not gonna be oh I feel a little bit tired or oh, I feel a little bit road rage like we've been talking about the last three days it's gonna be I got a big zit on my forehead or I've got uh, you know I feel really sick or I'm just dragging or I feel like I'm gonna throw up or all of a sudden I just got the flu, like why did, how did I get that flu? Well, it's because your body is now able to release some of the toxins. And guess what? If you're in pain or you have fibromyalgia, you don't think maybe these toxins have something to do with it? We do. And this is a challenge and it's a test. It's not, you know, once you go, oh wow, now you can do something about it. And that's what this is all about. So we want you to journal. We want you to be aware of what's going on. We want you to be, you know, aware of what may be happening so that you can watch for it and these seven days you really have to pay attention that's why it's so important to journal how do I feel in the morning how do I feel in the afternoon how do I feel in the evening did I sleep good you know do I have a runny nose am I coughing like what's going on and oh I didn't have flour I didn't have sugar I didn't have salt I didn't have milk I grew up drinking milk like water and my nose was 100 percent plugged 100 percent of the time and I think milk had a lot to do with it because ever since I stopped drinking milk or, well, I mean, I have yogurt, but I mean, I don't drink milk like I drink water. It's been clear. And I think there's some environmental things too. I don't think anything is necessarily 100%, but they can be a whole bunch of factors. And if you can see, here's one factor that's a huge, huge thing to my health. It's not everything to my health, but it's with some big one. Let's use the 80-20 rule, right? Let's get rid of the big stuff. Oh, wow, I feel a lot better when I don't have white flour. I don't have white sugar. Great. Let's make those changes. And then you can worry about the rest of it a little bit later. So that's your challenge for today. It's get rid of all the white stuff. Get rid of all the processed stuff. Eat raw foods. Eat organic. Drink lots of water. Journal what's going on. Let us know in the comments below. Martin is here to support you. So Martin, this would be a good time because hopefully you're scared. He's going to give you a phone number and a website where you can go, our website. And if you have a problem, call him. Say, Martin, day four, no flour, no sugar. I'm going nuts. What do I do? Because he's our health coach and he will help you. Indeed, the, the main point I really want to stress is your journaling. And this the common reaction to eliminating these uh, non-foods is that you get more energy. And I certainly hope that you do. Four out of five people usually get more energy. And one out of five doesn't. Most people start feeling better. Some of us are the lucky ones who start feeling worse immediately. So, <laughs> well, anyway, you'll know. I certainly hope for you that you start feeling better. So that's going to at least give you a lift and a sample and a uh, and a vignette of what life could be like. You know, good as opposed to oh lord, how can I go through this? Anyway, um, call me. I'm at one eight six six five two 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 two.
543-3388. Keep notes. Sometimes it takes three or four days of clean before you um, really feel the full relief or the full reaction. So uh, if you can, just get on the clean and sustain it for the rest of this challenge. Wonderful. Okay, thank you everybody. Tomorrow it's the gluten challenge. So we'll be uh, talking a little bit about gluten and that sort of stuff. And leave some comments below. Let us know how you're doing. We really do care. See you next see you tomorrow. <laughs>